Greetings and welcome back, gentles and ladies, been to a very belated series in the multi-platform, uh, multi-commentary setup Sonic Heroes playthrough. I'm X of Paradigm Gamer, and we've got one more playthrough left to go before we could start with uh, the final chapter, which looks like it might have everybody in it if we can help it. Uh, and that is the super hard mode that you get unlock uh, for just want to make sure that's off so that I don't get blurred pixels. And, yes, that's off. Okay. Oh no! Uh, blurred pixels. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll talk. Uh, RZ and I will talk more about that because we're the only one who cares. Uh, but yeah, so super hard mode. If you get all 141 A ranks in this game, you unlock then you're super insane. hard mode. <laughs> And I brought along some special guests that have not appeared in the other playthroughs, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, and Super Hard Mode is kind of like the Egg Shuttle from Sonic Colors, even though it came first, where it's just, you go through the whole game on one set of lives, and, uh, oh, I guess the difference here is that they do actually change the levels slightly. It's 90% the same as Team Dark. Uh, so if you've played Team Dark, you will recognize, like, enemy placement and hazard placement from that, that particular playthrough. Uh, but they do add a couple of things, but yeah. Uh, so, how about one at a time here, let's all go around and introduce ourselves for people who might not know. Starting with? Uh, how about <laughs> you, Josh, why don't you introduce one. yourself? <laughs> Alright, you got it. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Josh from Off of the Geek Critique, a uh, YouTube channel that, um, pretty, pretty much in the same genre as Exos. I, I do video game retrospectives and analyses and things like that. Um, I'm primarily here because I, I, the Sonic Heroes is my least favorite game in my very favorite, like, video game series. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to provide a contrast to him, I think. Yeah. Uh, because for the most part, the people I've invited along all seem to be a fan of this game. Uh, some people less than others, but, you know, like, even Frank likes this game. And he generally does not like most 3D Sonic games, I've found, so... Yeah. So, having Josh along was kind of a way to bring along a different perspective, I guess. Um, give him... Give him some speaking room. Uh, to sort of talk about things he doesn't like about the game. And I brought along two additional guests, uh, one of whom I believe, actually both of whom I believe have been on uh, either the SA2 series of videos I did a while back or on the Let's Play channel proper. Uh, how about uh, Nick? Hi. Yeah, I was in the Star Fox Zero LP for a little bit, uh, so some of you might remember me from that. I'm the creator of Planet Ripple. I used to make a ton of Sonic videos. Uh, lately, I'm trying to branch out with other content, though, you know, I'm, there'll always be a place for Sonic and me. <laughs> that didn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's this fandom, man. Nothing would surprise me at this point. And last but not least, we have Mr. Retropolis Zone. Yes, hello people, I am Z Retropolis Zone, and today we are playing the Sonic the Heroes the Heart Mode. I don't know why we, that's a joke, we're back but apparently with more it of the is. Sonic Heroes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, everybody uh, knows who I am. You don't need to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm, um, so I'm that infamous guy who hasn't uploaded in almost seven months. So yeah. One thing. Oh, wait, have, have I seriously uploaded more recently than you? Yeah, I think so. That oh, that's. That feels weird to think, because I, I haven't uploaded in, like, ages. Okay, this stage is, uh, not, is really short. Not for short. lack of trying, Wait, mind you. It's the, it's the shortest stage in the game, so I just want to say a couple of things about it real quick. Um, okay, I understand some that some people don't like how long the levels in Heroes typically are. I think this one's a pretty respectable length. They were all around this size, you know, like, just under five minutes. I think that'd be, you know, okay. Uh, but one thing I really admire about these early stages especially is how they, they try to create a sense of scale. 
Like, it kind of starts with Seagate, as terrible of a tutorial stage as that is. I like how at the very end of it, when you get into a clearing, you can see a crappy JPEG of the Whale Island in the background. And then throughout this entire stage, you see that same image. You know, the game, t I mean, the stage tells you at the beginning, get to the Whale Island. And you see, like, the entire time, that you go indoors for a little bit, and they load up an entire 3D model that wasn't there before, as you get to the end of the stage. They did some kind of similar in Sand Ocean with uh, the pyramid, where it was just this flat image for most of the stage, and then it goes out of view for a while, and then they boot up an entire 3D model. I think it's pretty clever when they do that. Wow, you know, um, I've died. It, it says a lot about how visually unperceptive I tend to be that I've never noticed either of those things. <laughs> <laughs> is it just for me, or is Josh cutting out? Uh, yeah, he, he is cutting out slightly, but I can hear most of what he's saying. Yeah. As long as the recording is complete. Yeah, mm. I'll, I'll keep an eye on my waveform. Yep, yeah, it looks fine. It's not cutting out at all. Great. Um, so we all know what Josh thinks of this game, or at least generally, and if you guys have watched the previous <laughs> series in this big thing, you know what I think. Uh, so Nick and RZ, uh, what are your general impressions on Sonic the Heroes? Uh, I, I, I've explained this all the last time we were together. Do I have to do this again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> God damn. Uh, okay, so nobody... for people who don't know, we've recorded this, uh... I think it was almost two months ago by now, and then yeah. something went wrong along the way, and we basically lost everything. That so was me. We are redoing it, uh, and now I have to. Now we have to talk about all of it again. And I, I'm it, it was too, so. <laughs> it's been so long that I got my Wii Duel in the meanwhile. I have no idea what we were talking about anymore. So, uh, yeah, this game. I don't know. I. It's okay. It's okay. It There's sure a lot of things isn't. I don't like about it, but I think we've all heard what we don't like about it. It's just the controls are really slippery, game's janky, a lot of the levels feel too long, and I just feel like, despite the fact that it has this complexity with three characters, it doesn't really add much, it's more kind of a novelty thing, and the game doesn't have a lot of depth when you really get down to it. I felt, I felt like it was more a spectacle kind of game than really something with a lot of substance, but that's just me. It sure is a video game. I'll give it that. <laughs> now, okay, the game's biggest problem is how rote it is. Um, like, the best Sonic games, they use the terrain. You're just a simple shaping of the landscape to try to gain speed in an organic way. And there are a couple of moments when this almost approaches that. But for the most part, it's just a combination of repetitive set pieces. Like, oh, you use a triangle, dive here. Oh, uh, f fly here. You know, hit the targets. Uh, grab the switches. And it's it's a much more basic, more oh platformy game. Like, I love the the platforming in most Sonic games because it's integrated into the environment, the, the environment really seamlessly. Like, it's just part of the the scenery. But here, it's so obvious and gimmicky that they were just copying, pasting various assets into a, an obstacle course. And usually, I think Sonic uh, games do a good job hiding the fact that it's an obstacle course. This one's just more bare bones about it. Yeah, can we mention the fact that this game has a lot of stupid gimmicks and gameplay segments that add nothing? Like, oh, there are three switches, we have three characters, what do we do? You know, it's just the the switch stuff, uh, the simple puzzles and the combat. I, I We've talked about the combat last time. Uh, the combat is so fucking dull. Like, at least in the earlier levels, it's not too big of a problem because it's... They don't have a lot of health, but then when you get to the end of the game, and especially as Team Dark, it just takes way too long for how little complexity there is in the combat to me. Yeah. And then it got yeah, worse with Sonic 06. That kind of started with Heroes, I think. The whole, uh... Yeah. Going overboard with com uh, combat. I still think mechanically it's a fine enough game. It's functional at least, but it's just so basic in some ways. It, it, people think that it's really complex and hard. No, there's just a ton of busy work. Again, they're constantly having to stop what you're doing and switch to whoever is appropriate for the task at hand. And this is one area where I think Sonic Forces <laughs> actually improved. Because what they essentially did with the two characters there is they made it one character that just has like twice as many tricks. 
and whenever you need to do one thing as one character, it automatically switches to them. So there's a lot less busy work, you're just doing, you know, whatever you need to at the time. Uh, so there's one thing that I can say positively about forces. Yeah, this was kind of the last hurrah, like, <clears throat> of the post Super Mario 64 era. Where, you know, Mario 64 came out and everybody loved it and it was very, it was revolutionary and, but there were so many, like, rumors online about, oh, here's how you can play as Luigi, here's, like, you know, <laughs> the, like, people, people yeah. really wanted more playable characters in their 3D platformers. And then they got that in Super Mario DS and they didn't like it. <laughs> but yeah, like, games like Sonic Adventure, um, Sonic Heroes, even Mario Kart Double Dash, I guess, to an extent with its, uh, dual character dynamic. Um, so... Um, this was all sort of sort of the result of an industry being like, oh, so you guys want lots and lots of playable characters, and then finding out that mechanically that didn't always work out so well. Yeah. Um, so Josh, uh, one of one of the uh, other reasons I thought it would be good to have along is you have more context on you know kind of the pre-release for Heroes than the rest of us do. I think because you're uh, all babies, yes. I was still in I diapers know, I when I, I wasn't in diapers when it came out, but I was still a youngling. I ate up everything Sonic, so yeah. And yeah, like I think I was ten when this game came out. Like I, I remember seeing the commercial on TV. Like this is before I knew anything about Sonic, and I was like, that commercial looks kind of neat. Then the next time I met, I was at the video store. Uh, I, I got the game or rented it, rather, and then I played it, and then I liked it enough that I wanted to check out the other th Sonic games on GameCube. So yeah, uh, so then this, I didn't, this was your first oh, Sonic look, game. Oh, look, I died, because the thingy... The game loves the, the ramp killing you for things you me into didn't an enemy. do wrong. Uh, <clears throat> which is a thing that happens, unfortunately. Uh, but, yeah, so Josh, you, you had a Genesis growing up. You uh, were there to experience the launch. The rise and fall of the Dreamcast, uh, mm -hmm. and <laughs> the the success of everybody's 480i machine, the PlayStation 2, and uh, you were there for the pre-release of Sonic that, Heroes. So why don't you tell us a little bit more you, about that? Is that how you choose to characterize the PS2, the 480i <laughs> machine? Yes. I mean, it's, it's a console with a great library, I mean, it was the, but it was the best hardware. It was the best-selling console of all time, but no, 480i. That was really the the, the, the most characteristic thing about it. Yes. The Dreamcast could do 480p, that's all I'm saying. Uh, I think yes. nobody yeah, cared at the had time. lots of 480p support. Nobody cared fact, at the time. I, well, yeah, nobody cared at the time, but in retrospect, it's great, because it means that pretty much any game on the system, you can f either force to 480p, or it supports it natively if you have the right plugins on it. Mm -hmm. Like, if, if you want to play Toy Story 2 on Dreamcast in 40p, you can do that. Not that you'd want to, since the game has clipping, like, a uh, MIP mapping issues, whoa, where if it's even whoa, slightly in front of you... Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> There's a thing you See, my, my, my Toy Story game was the one in the Genesis. You don't want to be in the way when my laser goes off. Yeah, you don't want to be in the way when my laser goes off. Doom, 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 doom. <laughs> That game. So anyway, uh, why a lot of people shit on that game? I think it's okay. I like that game too. I don't too. think it's that bad at all. I like how it manages to capture the feeling of actually being a toy and just climbing around something like an apartment being this huge undertaking. Uh, are we talking about the same game? I'm talking about uh, one. Yeah, I think on they're Genesis. talking about the Toy Story one game. Oh, whoops. Okay. On yeah, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if you were I talking mean, about two or one. There. Like everybody sucks two's dick, so we know about that. But one, nobody talks about one. And I think it's good as well. This Not, this uh, this probably says something about our age differences because in my mind, like one is the one that everybody loves, and I never hear anything about two. Yeah, right. I just wish like oh. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say I remember first the first time I ever played Heroes was the demo at a, a local Best Buy. And back then, to, to play a demo, they literally just hooked up a GameCube to a crappy little boxy CRT. Because yeah, that was all they had back then. Yep. They didn't have, you know, like, like a, a, a something with like all these games on it. A anyway, I, the, the, the two stages that were available at the time were Seaside Hill as Team Sonic and Bullet Station as Team Dark. That's a pretty big jump. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah, it's kind of the like how Kingdom period, Valley is Shadow's second level. The pre-release period of this game is uh, pretty important, I think, in sort of understanding the differences between like how I see it and how Exo sees it. Because you know, to you, like you said, this was your first Sonic game, and you went in with you know no expectations whatsoever. Yeah. Um. Like, I'm not saying that the only reason I dislike this game is because of how it was was because of this. Yeah. Because yeah, if I'd win, if I if I played it knowing nothing about it, I still wouldn't have liked it. But there was a whole lot about like the way that it was promoted and the way that it was talked about and the way that like Sonic Team themselves hyped it up and talked about it in interviews that made it more disappointing than it otherwise would have been, especially for somebody who did grow up with the Genesis games. Because the pre-release period of Heroes was just... It was another one of those examples of Sonic Team saying that they were, you know, going back to basics and they were going to recapture, you know, the, 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 the magic of the 16-bit titles and they were going back to that formula. And I remember, uh, you know, I found in my to research interject for the episode. quickly, it's, it is interesting to hear that, you know, online Sonic discourse has always been like this. Yeah. <laughs> Even back in 2004. I, um... I mean, into when, when the game came out, what I remember about the online discourse is that most people didn't like it. At, at best, they were pretty, they considered it quite a letdown. And there were a few people who said it was kind of okay. Who said it wasn't quite as bad as, as, as people were making it out to be. But I don't remember hardly anybody, in the community at least, you know, saying like, Oh man, this is this is finally what we wanted. This is finally a great Sonic game. But you know, there's always going to be, like, thing. The fact that it, that it wasn't just like a game that wasn't to my taste, but that it was also such a letdown when it looked like like it has the aesthetics of being of like playing to to like my specific nostalgia, and then like gameplay wise, it wasn't that in any, in any way, shape, or form. Um, that's that is part of it, you know. I am. Um, yeah, I, I will say, um, like I, I do like this game. I don't love it. But I do still like it enough. I can sit down and if someone like sat me down to play it, I could just jump into it and have a decent time. But it's much more mechanical and brainless than other okay, Sonic games. Okay, how did that what happen? A, see, this is what this is the, the stuff Heroes the does. Floor. This is the stuff Heroes wow. does. Wow, none of this was happening. <laughs> like the last time we we did this, there weren't weird glitches yeah. like this. But anyway, what was I gonna well, say? But then, oh. Oh, yeah. sorry, I was, I was just saying, um, but, but like I was saying, it's a much more mechanical, brainless sort of fun, because you're just doing what the game tells you and following the signs, like, oh, okay, I'll switch to power formation here. It's not this constant organic flow like you typically expect in a Sonic game. It's just a series of events that you're kind of participating in. <laughs> and, like, I still yeah. can't... I still can't get over the stuff that I found, like, talk, where Sonic Team was talking about their sort of philosophy behind this game. Saying that, like, oh, that, that, since they knew that this game was being built from the ground up for, you know, the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox, that, like, they didn't think that, that like, casual gamers would, would, would be able to, like, handle the speed of, like, or the style of a Sonic Adventure game. Which is that both, is like, insulting to them. interesting thought. <laughs> <laughs> but what's crazy about that is Sonic is about twice as fast in this game as he is in the adventure games, isn't he? Didn't they, like, crank him up? Yeah, I remember oh. Josh mentioning that in his video. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah, that's that's what people who've actually looked at the code t told me. Uh, Josh, I, I don't know if it's just me, but he, I can sometimes not follow what he's saying because it keeps cutting out. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it's, uh, uh, is it maybe like a volume threshold thing, where if you're below it, it cuts you out, or is it a connection thing, because... Uh, I'll, oh, I can look at my noise gate. You guys cover for me, for, for a minute, I think this that. game did a weird set of damage to the franchise, but not in the way that most people might think. Um, after the, I mean, when this game came out, I didn't see how they could ever go back to the traditional Sonic kind of gameplay. I'm like, wow, now you play as three characters and you feel so overpowered and there's like so many big explosions and stuff. Going back to like an, an adventure classic style game after this would feel like a downgrade. I just didn't see how they could do it. But of course, your graphics got better and they made the whole Unleashed style for better or worse. And now we're back to just playing as Sonic again. 
But at the time, it was like when a story like goes to space, and then you're like, well, okay, yeah. anything after this is gonna feel like a step down. That's how heroes felt at the time. It was kind of overwhelming. I just didn't see how they could go back. Yeah.